out. So this is a video for Embodied Facilitator course students on how to do a great demonstration. So a demonstration is sometimes called the exam. I prefer the term demonstration because it shows the heart of it. And this is really some advice on over the years of doing them in the UK and Russia, I've examined many, many people, failed a bunch, passed more, that you start to see what's good. And I think, um, you know, there's the exam criteria, which you can get and please do have a good look at. But this is an overview of some of the things that um, I think makes a good demo, uh, whether it's one that's recorded or one in person. We do both in different places. So um, I'll speak to both of those. In some ways, they're pretty similar. OK, so first thing, give something useful. Uh, if you're orientating just around passing, you'll be nervous. Uh, and you won't actually be giving a gift to people. I think one of the great ways to orientate around this, your demonstration, is to say, this is what I'm showing my learning, but I'm also giving a gift to all my partic fellow participants. Um, you know, for me, there's some every year where I actually end up going, wow, that's a really good idea, and I ask the person, do you mind if I use this? Uh, and there's definitely, definitely lots that I've been in as a participant that I've learned a lot from and got a lot from. So rather than just seeing it as a hoop to jump through, see it as a learning opportunity, an opportunity to give in terms of what you're doing. Yeah? So in terms of the learning opportunity, yes, we want to see there's a certain standard there, but it's okay to be learning while you're doing it. You don't have to be perfect, okay? So if you have that pattern of perfectionism, letting that go as much as you can, there's a body to that, remember. Um, we, for example, it's okay if you're nervous. It's really okay. For me, if someone's a bit nervous, it just shows that they care. So that's how I would interpret that. Um, if there was like super like whatever, I'd be more worried in a way. Uh, so it's okay to be nervous and we just want to see that you're making some effort to self-regulate that. If I do a talk for a thousand people or a TED talk or something like that, I'm nervous too. It's okay to be nervous, okay? So don't make that that you have to be perfect in that way. Um, equally, if you're like, I don't know, you accidentally touch someone's shoulder briefly without asking permission, that's not the end of the world, okay? We're not going to fail you on that as long as it's not just you're blind to it or it's a consistent thing. Um, in terms of what people do fail for or sort of less good things, not being clear on the aim. Sometimes they just say, oh, we're exploring this. It's like, well, what are people going to get from it? Yeah, um, often the rhythm is off. So that criteria of um, usually people trying to do too much and rushing the end, that's a pattern we see quite often. So maybe going to look at what could you take out, yeah, and say to yourself, well, I'm, you know, seven minutes before the end, I'm definitely going to enter into the debrief or whatever. Um, so people can actually get the learning to take away that rhythm. Operational language, despite the fact that we go on about it, EFC, sometimes I still hear a lot of unicorns. Um, yeah, the odd one, it's not going to fail you, but we do want to hear that you've learned at least the basics of that. Yeah, in terms of ethics, we have had a few fails on this in the past in terms of um, uh, basically being of service and it being safe. Um, if you're not sure, remember, run it by us, run it by, um, you, you know, we do ask for a little bit beforehand. You can discuss it with trainers. Uh, you can discuss it with assistant trainers. You can definitely discuss it with peers. So discuss with each other, is there anything or ethical risks here? Because that's one of the sort of immediate kind of, okay, this could really be a problem kind of things. Um, key, key, key thing then, and this is really, really central, so I want everyone to get this. The, a good demo should be a mixture of what you've learned from us and what you bring yourself. All right, I'm going to say those two things again, because there's definitely people that have failed by just doing their own thing that was sort of like, well, that's not what we taught you all year. They've just done like an NLP session or something, and we've gone, well or they've done something that was physical but not embodied, like they've done a fitness session and I've gone, it's not an embodiment session. Look at what defines embodiment, it relates to the person as a whole, the whole person, not just the physical fitness side uh, or massage side, for example. Okay, so it's relating to the whole person, it's embodied, takes on board maybe some of the models, but also brings something of yourself to it. Um, if you're just doing like centering coaching, for example, it's boring. It's not, we're not going to fail you for it, but it's like, uh, the whole point of a principles approach is you integrate it. So I thought, you know, one really good exam from last year, there was someone that did a food session in a corporate context using centering and four elements. And I was like, wow, okay, interesting combination. They brought a bunch of their own models and material and thoughts around eating and overeating. I have, you know, I've only studied that a bit myself. So I was learning something. Oh, that's cool. Uh, another example I really liked, there was a girl from Israel, Marav, who's a doula, which is like a, a midwife. And um, she was doing four elements uh, giving birth 
I was actually a pregnant Israeli woman in this exam. Uh, it was one of those ones where we enroll. Um, so remember in your exams, you can have people as themselves, that's probably easier. And some people every year will say, right, you're all business people. I saw a really good one that was um, uh, using embodiment around a boardroom table and everyone was sort of play acting being business executives. It's a little harder to get people to sort of step into role. I saw one where that went disastrously wrong, where someone had all their friends be sort of teenagers they were supposed to be teaching and everyone acted out. It wasn't great for them. Not very supportive, I would say. But um, yeah, so there's, there can be ones where you have people acting role. Normally it's yourselves. Great exam from Rav where she was uh, getting people to give birth using the four elements. And what I loved about that was I know nothing about giving birth. I've never been pregnant, obviously. Haven't studied it but she'd taken the principles and used it combined with her work. And that's what EFC is all about. So whether it's like the, you know, the Dutch, exec, Dutch HR manager who did the boardroom table one, that was original. We wanna see something creative. We wanna see something original. We wanna see you bringing your gift to it so that it's a contribution to the, to the work and to the community and your peers who are either gonna be in your exams or they're gonna watch it on video, right? So um, yeah, there's three examples of ones I've really liked, you know, all pretty different. Um, where people have actually brought themselves to it and done it creatively. And in all of them, I also had the sense that it was a real gift. It wasn't just a, a like a jumping through hoops exercise. Okay, talk a little bit about the online ones. So um, this is fairly new. I really like it. There's pros and cons to it though. A uh, big pro, obviously, if you're doing it online is you can do it a couple of times. We're not trying to fail you, remember? We just want to see that you can demonstrate, it's another use of the word, demonstrate that you've got the basic competence. and. And for everyone, that is our line, basic competence and the ability to learn. So if we see someone who's not basically competent and arrogant or doesn't seem like they're learning or completely hasn't got it, yes, that's a fail. If it's dangerous and there's that sense that they're not getting it in any way. But it, it's not, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you see there's some basic competence and they're, they're learning and growing, that's fine. Because my sense is a lot of the competence you'll get is actually after EFC when you're employing the work. It's like... You pass your driving test, then you really learn to drive. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Anyway, online. Uh, so when you send in the video, a couple of things. Check your bloody battery. Check that your phone or whatever you're recording on is got full battery or is plugged in or plugged into an external battery. Video really drains battery, so test that beforehand. Can your phone last 40 minutes or however long we asked you to do it? Normally it's 40 minutes. Um, unplugged in without an external battery on video record. Some cannot. iPhones die relatively quickly, for example. Check your memory is not full. Again, test it. Set it up just pointing at the TV for, for an hour, say. Make sure you delete that and delete that from deleted files. Make sure your phone's got the memory. This sounds silly, but there's a couple of people that had to completely redo the whole thing as a result of not doing this. And it's just kind of sad. Um, obviously, the people involved need to know what's happening. We found people on video have been a bit more cautious for trying new things. Um, do do something creative, whatever format you're doing it in. And uh, actually, I really like the fact that we're using real people. The problem with doing it in person is your friends are actually quite, we're getting quite an unrealistic picture of how you may be uh, with embodiment. So they're the main um, technical things, I would say, if you're doing it, uh, if you're sending in one. Yeah, last thing I'd say on this is, remember, it's not the end of the world. This is just one piece. Um, yes, you'll, you'll still get a certificate of attendance if you don't pass this. We, you know, we really wanted to have this standard for certifying people. Um, yeah, you will, if you're uh, doing it virtually, you'll get one more attempt if you send something in uh, after the event, but we won't keep doing it forever because it takes work. And you know, three months afterwards, that's the end of it for everyone, whatever. Um, so yeah, but I'd say it's not the end of the world if you don't pass it. It could just be, you know, you got unlucky that day or whatever. The main thing of EFC is what you get from it personally and what you're actually learning. Um, and so you can see this, uh, this demo as a rite of passage, as an entrance into a community. It's also, it's like, it's, it's nice to have something intense. It's nice to have some sense of testing what you're really doing. And so we can check the standards, but also you can feel secure in like, yeah, I reached a certain standard. And if you didn't, you can still go, okay, and here's why. And there's people I know who have failed uh, exams who then became room team, for example, so I was in contact with them afterwards, who really learned 
why they fucked something up and they never made that mistake again. You could like burn it into their memory to use operational language or whatever. So even if you fail, there could actually still be a better learning in some ways. So don't make too big a deal of it. Uh, do your best, offer something of value. And you know, lastly, I'll just reassure you, I've, we're very fair in how we um, examine these. Um, it takes to fail someone. It takes two people to both agree on pretty objective criteria. Um, so you know, if you don't get on with one of the trainers, for example, don't worry. You have two trainers, and we always discuss it, and both people have to fully agree. Uh, and this makes it, I think, as fair a system as we can. So I hope, hope that reassures you, gives you some pointers. If you've got more questions, do ask course manager, peer group, and the trainers. We can all give you more tips on this if you want to run things by us.